Good afternoon, and thanks for tuning into the final round of BevNet's New Beverage Showdown 21 competition. I'm Ray Latif, the editor and producer of BevNet's Taste Radio podcast, the number one podcast for the food and beverage industry. The New Beverage Showdown is the leading business pitch competition for the beverage industry. Presented by Venturing and Emerging Brands, an operating unit of the Coca-Cola Company, the showdown features 12 startup beverage companies who will have the opportunity to present their business plans and products to a panel of expert judges and our live stream audience. The winner of the two-day competition will receive a $10,000 ad package and join a short list of brands that have triumphed in the showdown, including HealthAid, Malk, Owl's Brew, Hoplark, and Grady's Cold Brew. Out of the 12 semifinalists who presented on Tuesday, six have made it to the final round. Let's talk about the rules for the final round. Each of the six brands will have five minutes to present and receive five minutes of immediate feedback from the judging panel. After all the brands have presented, the judges will convene and we will, have, and we will announce the winner live just after 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll also have a short interview with the winner after the announcement. Just a note, there will be no audience voting for this round. All right, let's introduce our esteemed judges, beginning with John Craven, who is the founder and CEO of BevNet and a widely recognized authority on the beverage industry. His vision shapes the editorial, publishing, and positioning of all BevNet properties. Hello, John. Hello, Ray. Great to see you as always. All right, next we have Priscilla Guevara, who's the head of investor relations for Science Ventures, a Los Angeles-based incubator and venture fund focused on companies that tap into societal shifts and disrupt entrenched markets. The firm's portfolio includes notable companies such as Bird, Mammoth Media, and notable for this competition, Liquid Death. Prior to science, Priscilla served as an investor for ZX Ventures, the venture capital arm of, of Anheuser-Busch. Priscilla, great to see you. Good to see you. Happy to be here. All right. Next up is Dan White, who is the chief of the New Revenue Streams unit at the Coca-Cola Company. As the leader of New Revenue Streams, Dan drives new business models and opportunities, including category expansion into alcohol and coffee, along with the integration of fast-growing pre premium brands, including Topo Chico Mineral Water and Body Armor. Dan, great to see you. Great. Thank you so much for having me. All right. And last but certainly not, not least is Vanessa Du, who is the co-founder and chief sales officer of HealthAid. Vanessa co-founded HealthAid Kombucha in 2012 alongside her best friends and husband and wife team, Justin and Dinah Trout. Vanessa has led HealthAid's sales team to boost availability in key channels and markets while cultivating the HealthAid brand as a whole. The brand is now available in 35,000 stores including those of Whole Foods, Target, and Trader Joe's. Vanessa, so great to see you. You too, Ray. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy you're with us. It feels like uh, we're going a little back in time over here because, uh, as I mentioned, Healthy did win this competition back in the day. Uh, and as a former champion, we'll just call you a forever champion, as a champion, any uh, last-minute words of advice for the uh, finalists? Yeah, I would say have fun with it. Be you. You ultimately know why you got into this crazy game of beverage and why your product is awesome. So let that shine. Great advice indeed. All right, let's turn it over to our first finalist for this round. That's Beth Ann Schaefer, who is the president and founder of Nope Beverages. Beth Ann, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us for this round. Congratulations on making it to the finals. You now have five minutes to present. Are you ready for those five minutes? Yes. Fantastic. Those five minutes begin now. Hi, I'm Beth Ann, and I am the founder of Note Beverages. We've all been there or know someone who has had one too many cocktails, resulting in regrettable decisions. Maybe they ended up married in Vegas, woke up with a misspelled face tattoo, or went home with a 10, but woke up with a 2. We've all made mistakes fueled by alcohol and vowed to do things differently. But... How can you be part of the party without sacrificing fun and taste? If you're not a soda drinker and are sick and tired of seltzer and cranberry, there aren't a lot of options, which is why I created Nope, a premium line of carbonated, ready to drink, non-alcoholic cocktails, or as we like to call them, alt tails, bubbling with real fruit and herbal flavors and shamelessly challenging the way you chill. Nope was conceived in my kitchen. You see, my newly sober ex-husband and I were both going through bad breakups. Me with him 
and him with booze. But together, we had sipped every seltzer brand made and found ourselves experiencing a serious case of palate fatigue. Wanting more for celebratory occasions, so I took to blending fresh recipes that proved to be a huge hit when tested at local bars and restaurants. And not just there. Our 12 ounce sleek can can be taken anywhere you wanna celebrate. The beach game, concert, festival, Nope's easy crack and pour canned alt tails blend unique artisanal flavors for today's active consumer or anyone seeking a break from booze. A unique solution in a rapidly growing market, our package brand and message are designed to make Nope a disruptive and diverse brand as bold and bright as the product itself and a reflection of our customers who aren't shying away from their sober choices. Instead, they're saying, yep, to Nope making responsible decisions while poking fun at the bad choices we may have once met, made. Want a drunk texture X? Nope. We target millennials, two thirds of which have indicated a desire to drink less, are the driving force behind our rapid success, promoting us all over social media, helping Nope sell out three months ahead of schedule with minimal market spend. A generation that has grown up on $7 coffees one with a different mindset around drinking and are the main contributors to this movement, exploding with so searches for NA up 81% and making hashtags like sober nation and sober is sexy mainstream. Proof of this sober explosion is popping up everywhere. And this year, businesses selling mocktails have increased 130% with fewer taste worthy options sold in the space until nope. Nope has a more complex flavor profile and burn than soda. Four uniquely sophisticated flavors are the strawberry basil smash, the rosemary vanilla lemonade, the raspberry lime ginger beer, and the mango margarita with jalapeno. There's a lot of competition amongst products with CBD and those imitating beer, spirits, and wine, and are often sold in glass, made to serve with alcohol, with very serious packaging, lacking in taste and convenience, and many consumers just avoid altogether drinks that mock a beverage sold in the alcohol industry that could trigger cravings. They're seeking an alternative with a unique flavor profile like Nope. We use all natural ingredients, no artificial sweeteners or unrecognizable ingredients. Consumers seek simple blends and are having to make their own. Muddling produce, juices, simple syrup, and ice that can be up to 180 calories. Nope is only 90 calories, 40 calor 45 per glass, which our consumers love. Uh, others want more out of their NA drinks, so our four remaining SKUs were made with half the calories and carbs, so you can indulge without the guilt of consuming alcohol or excessive amounts of sugar. Nope is well positioned to sell in multiple channels. This year, we launched an e-com site, landed in 49 states in Canada, are sold locally in grocery and liquor stores, on-premise and locations coast to coast, as well as in curated marketplaces, and soon distributed in Canada. The next step for Nope will be to partner with regional distribution. Nope is competitively priced with other categories, such as functional beverages and flavored coffee at $5 a can with 30% retail margins. And when poured over ice and garnished, Nope can be sold for $7 to $10 on-premise a 50% margin for our partners with the benefit being less time and money spent on waste and prep. There is a great opportunity in the no low segment and Nope is positioned to fill it. The original alt tale made popular by a generation of consumers turned off by the stigma and use of words like virgin or mocktail. Nope is an emerging leader in the beverage industry representing a generation of consumers not asking, why aren't you drinking? Rather, the Beth Ann, I'm so sorry. Your time is up, but uh, okay. thank you so much. Well done. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's hear from the judges. Um, I'm interested to hear from uh, Priscilla to start. You know, uh, we are seeing quite a bit of interest in this uh, low or no uh, alcohol cocktail, beer, wine space. Um, mm -hmm. And Nope has this positioning as an alt tail, uh, which I don't think we've seen yet. In general, what are your thoughts on, you know, the potential for the category and Nope within it? I think it's, it's a great category to go after. I think Gen Z and millennials in general are moving towards this kind of healthy lifestyle. Um, even when I was at ZX, and now this is like years ago, we started to see that shift and we had a dedicated group specific to Noel. 
Um, so I think there's definitely that shift. Um, I mean, we have liquid death right now, and I think more and more folks are going to be going towards this healthier lifestyle. Um, what I do love about um, Nope as well, I think it's, um, I haven't heard of alt tales before, um, but I do think there's, I, I think there's an opportunity, right? I think there's, there is a flavor profile of these types of cocktails where you don't want that alcohol and, and kind of that later feeling of being hungover. So I think that's, that's definitely a, a great move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's talk about the the flavor of the beverages. John, um, you know, uh, Bethany Ann talked about the products having a complex flavor in comparison to soda. Was that your feeling as well? Um, I think right now they're, you know, somewhat similar to soda, if I'm being honest. Um, but, you know, I think having new SKUs that have lower sugar, really uh, curious to try those. I think, you know, that that seems like something that will just, you know, as with anyone who cuts sugar in their beverages, have a bigger opportunity. But, you know, I do like the the underlying sort of direction of the flavors. Um, I think the one that I was just sampling was the jalapeno flavor, you know, definitely is something that slows you down a bit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there's definitely some good stuff there. Again, would be curious to, to try it with a little less uh, sugar in the mix. So. Mm-hmm. Dan, uh, I, I have to think that the Coca-Cola company is looking at opportunities in low and no alk uh, beverages. You in particular, as I mentioned in your intro, are looking at uh, opportunities within the alcohol space. But um, I, there, are, there are so many different plays that we've seen within this space. Um, what do you think of the positioning of Nope as it stands today? Yeah, I think I think the um, a, a couple of things. And, and, and Beth, and congratulations on your journey, you know, both on the, on the beverage side and on the personal side. You know, on on the development of this um, of this brand, you know, I I think um, what what I'd say is there's there's uh, quite a bit of convergence going on, right? I mean, there's there's the beer wine spirits convergence, and then there's the alk and non alk convergence. And I think um, one of the most beautiful pieces of, of of Topo Chico mineral water, you know, going back to one of our brands, is that I said it's a brand that hangs effortlessly with alcohol. You know, it's a brand that in a, in a bar, if you're drinking a Topo Chico, then people don't kind of look at you like, well, why are you not drinking? And I think what, what you've, you know, kind of um, culturally got your got your 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 um, thumb on here is that it's a it's a really relevant way of looking at and and, and breaking the stigma of um, of hanging with um, friends socially and and just not partaking in alcohol, which I which I really appreciate a lot. I, it was it was also the first beverage uh, that I received in my in my care packages, so the first one I tried, so it's probably a little closer to my heart. But I do think that the, the addressable market is is one that is is going to blend. You know, I think um, if I take a look at Seedlip that's out there, that there's this notion that you know, even though it is a, um, a non-alcoholic ready to drink mixer um, that can be drunk straight or mixed, I think that the addressable market's probably um, broader than how you defined it on the on the product. And, that, and it'll come from how consumers decide they, they, they you know, they want to put the product to use. Yeah, that's a great point, Dan. And I wanted to ask Vanessa, uh, Beth Ann mentioned that Nope is well positioned to sell in multiple channels. Do you agree with that sentiment? I would say that the consumer you're going after, that Gen Z, that millennial who's looking for something that is the alternative to a, a cocktail, I would say this really kind of starts fundamentally, maybe a natural. Um, there's obviously that proven story to get to scale and get to conventional and mass, but I think to really prove out what that consumer you're going for, it really kind of starts with this better for you consumer. And that's often found in natural whole foods and this kind of discovery through DTC. Indeed. All right. Well, great feedback from the judges and great presentation, Beth Ann. Thank you so much for uh, a fantastic round. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, on to our next finalist. That's Bar Malik, who is the founder and CEO of Barcode. Bar, how are you? How's it going? Good. How you doing, it, Ray? It's going well. Great to see you. Congratulations on making it to the finals. Your five minutes will begin now. Thank you, Ray. Uh, hi, everybody. Bar Malik here, founder and CEO of, of Drink Barcode. I think the uh, last 24 hours in my space in particular, a lot of things have happened. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else saw, but, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, was giving a press conference um, with the product in front of him they didn't like. 
And for me, as a you know, as a founder of a, of a hydration product, I think it just speaks volumes of where we are as a as a sports community. Um, this this product represents you know um, athletes in a way I think that is you know different than represented in the past. My background is in sports. Um, you know, I spent a lot of years training professional athletes. I went to school for sports science, sports medicine, um, exercise physiology. Um, I worked in Major League Baseball for five years. I spent the past seven years here in New York City as the head of performance with the New York Knicks. And that job uh, description, I was in, in, in charge of you know, nutrition, strength and conditioning, sports science. I worked very closely uh, with the NBA as far as just product development and technology innovation. And I felt like, you know, because a lot of beverages and, uh, you know, they only look at athletes from a use case perspective, I felt like we were dropping a ball on exactly what it means to support athletes performance, right? It's not just use case, they play a game for three hours of a day, they also have to live and breathe and just like us as, as everyday consumers, in a way that sustains performance and helps facilitate recovery. Athletes don't just play games, they have to recover, they have to sustain the performance over the long haul. And um, through 10 years of research, tankering with you know ingredients, spending time advising, investing in other consumer package companies like Ladder Sport, which was founded by LeBron James, I felt like there was a massive opportunity to provide a product that one is, is invested by athletes who actually use the product in real time, partnered with strategic people who not only support athletes, but also you know, look at nutrition from a holistic perspective and you know surround the group of athletes with strategic you know non you know athletic personnel like other founders and also other investors who you know look at the sports realm the way that i do and that's how barcode was founded um it's the first product of its kind you know is created by professionals in the sports space backed by professional athletes this product has been road tested for you know over three years during NBA games, my co-founder who cannot join me at the moment is a basketball player who plays for the Lakers. He used it during the finals last year. Um, and I feel like this is an opportunity to just shed light on just like, what does it mean to have a product in sports that is better for you? Barcode is plant-based. It has two grams of all natural sugar with monk fruit. B6, B12, it has vitamin D from a shiitake mushroom. It's filled with adaptogens to help, you know, reduce stress and fatigue and also, you know, inhibit anxiety. And I think for once, you know, we're bridging the gap between elite athletics and the everyday consumer because finally we're bringing to detail the level of attention, research, and dedication that once was reserved only for elite athletes, commercializing it, putting it into a bottle, and allowing it to be available for the everyday consumer because we all need to perform in our everyday lives, not necessarily playing a sport, but I feel like you know living our everyday lives is a sport within itself. We launched you know two two months ago and we've been featured in Forbes, you know, Ad Week for a while, Birdie, The Hustle, Muscle and Fitness. We're a direct to consumer brand. We have strategic partnerships with Erewhon in Southern California. We have a naked retail partnership here in New York City. Our focus this year is, is really building out our e-commerce side of the house, looking at our data, really utilizing this, this convergence of social media and e-commerce with you know, other uh, ambassadors, influential in, uh, investors who have experience in nutrition and really allowing our partnerships with these athletes to really drive a ton of revenue and data before we strategically align ourselves with you know, um, other natural channels um, in the grocery, grocery space. I feel like you know we have a, a, a great product, a great opportunity. When I think about the team we put together, we put together a, a, a plethora of, of individuals who have experience in beverage. We have advisors who have experience in direct to consumer and digital marketing. Barcode is a championship product. We have the values of a great company. I feel like in order to really you know take over some of the space in this in this category, we have to have certain values. And one is you know technology, right? Like there's an opportunity here where we have scannable opportunities within the barcode, within our QR code to deliver content that is relatable, you know, behind the scenes videos, UGC that is really driven and, and positioned to let people see exactly what goes on behind the scenes. We have that AR filter in our current bottle that you can scan and get some cool graphics and some also some, some uh, inf information about the product. We have network effects. We have not just one professional athlete, but we have about five to six professional athletes on our cap table. We have other people who are involved in entertainment. So Bar, really I'm did. so sorry your five minutes are up, but uh, well done. Thank you. Uh, Dan, I, I got to start with you since uh, you represent what is likely uh, a, a very serious competitor if Barcode were to uh, scale at this point. But Bar mentioned that 
uh, barcode represents athletes more than uh, ha they have in the past, more than the category has in the past. Um, do you see it that way? Do you see this convergence of immunity, recovery, and performance in one drink as sort of advancing this category? Yeah, I think I think it's really interesting. I mean, it's an interesting position, right? I think I think there's there's a couple of uh, uh, highlights I'd look at. Is is you know, the the first is um, we want to be really careful about we will focus on the who um, and then focusing on the what. And so the 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 who is you know who's on the cap, cap table, who's you know who's who's using this, and then I think then you really get to the functionality of the of the what for. And and I'm super simple about the. Um, uh, the sports drink um, category, which is, it's just a really simple two by two of me versus we, you know, so it's team sport or individual. And then, you know, the, the Y axis of being around hydration versus function and making sure that you really understand where the, where the, where the product or the brand wants to be positioned there. I, I, I think, um, you know, there's a, there's certainly an opportunity to, to say that there's a, a broad based um, solution set, but that the marketplace for sure has fragmented you know, in a very specific drinks made for specific instances or, or, or uh, you know, um, functionality. So I, I think that that's going to be, um, you know, that, that'll have to uh, kind of stand the test of time. I think from an image brand perspective, you know, barcodes, su super interesting. The, the main piece of it is, is going to be around maintaining the simplicity of the brand and the, and the story, you know, that the, the pack itself is, is, is very simple. And so, you know, the, the story you want to tell beyond that is going to be um, really important to make sure you parse down and, and get and get very tight. Um, and, and then the last the last piece, I, I think, um, around that is, you know, the, the product itself tastes really good. So so the um, you know, I think it's a it's a really good alternative. Um, and, uh, and I think that, um, you know, the, the, the you know, taste is taste is king in, in addition to what the you know, what the what the what the functionality product does. So 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 good job in the formulations. Yeah, let's follow up on a couple of things that Dan just mentioned. Uh, John, uh, obviously, one of the most striking things about Barcode is its package itself, its label design. Um, what do you think of that package design? And what do you think of the flavor of this product, these products? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the packaging design is definitely different and catchy. I think the first time I saw it, I was like, am I looking at the back? Um, but you know, look, I think a lot of what you're describing uh, and, and what we're seeing sort of, you know, I mean, to some extent, it reminds me of like the early days of Soylent of like, you know, this kind of no frills look that's just bringing you kind of the goods inside the bottle and hopefully in a, you know, nice tasting way better than Soylent uh, for sure. Um, so I think there's definitely some good stuff here. I mean, it's got a lot of depth of flavor compared to like your typical sports drink. Um, you know, I think you guys did a nice job of masking everything that's in there and, you know, pretty low calorie sugar, uh, you know, is low and like the coconut water base too. So, uh, lots there. Um, you know, I think it's kind of like Dan said, you know, keeping that spirit is kind of the brand evolves will, will probably be the challenge. So. Vanessa, as someone who has had to communicate functional benefits as part of the overall message uh, about your brand and beverage, um, that's definitely going to be an important part of Barcode as it scales. Um, what do you see right now as being some of the advantages and some of the disadvantages of its strategy as it stands? Yeah, I mean, like John said, the packaging is, is really catchy. I had to actually really hunt for what the product was um, and just understand it a little bit more. So I think as you gain more distribution and more consumers are coming in trying to wonder what it is, I think you'll have to really think about what the romance copy and how you're communicating truly a performance beverage out there. Um, I think you definitely lay out the function and the ingredients to make it simple. Um, and ultimately, it's if, if that's going to translate to consumers understanding the function behind it. I'll say that my husband, who is an athlete and would drink something like this with the ingredient profile and the sugars and calories, like he understood it really quickly, but I, I had to hunt a little bit for it. And uh, Priscilla, you get the last word. You know, as someone who is invested in a brand like Liquid Death that uh, mm -hmm. plays in a space that is highly competitive, um, that is uh, filled with very low margin products, um, I, I wonder what you think of the opportunity for barcode within also another highly competitive category of sports and performance drinks. 
Yeah, I mean, we've we've actually spent some time in the sports space. Um, we have a company that had just uh, been acquired by the feed. Um, so we're definitely a big fan of the athlete space. Um, what I would say from an investor standpoint, I think, Bar, you're very thoughtful in how you've gone out to market. I think thinking through um, the formulations, the, the strategic partnerships, and and really thinking through like the ingredients are adaptogens. That's that's certainly of the times, um, and then just more importantly, the function of the drink. I think that's that's really important. And I think what we saw in Liquid Death, and I think what I've seen in you, is that you're very mission driven, right? I think that that's that's something that you know you have the passion for. You're going to carry out. Um, and I think just personally for me as just someone to connect with the brand, I mean, I lived in New York for 20 years and now in LA. So I think <laughs> that kind of lifestyle um, certainly resonates. So I think um, from an investor standpoint, you know, continuing to refine and, and be thoughtful, I think is, is really important. Great stuff. Great feedback. Well done, Barr. All right, let's move on to our next finalist for this round. That's Kayla Castaneda, who is the co-founder and CEO of Agua Bonita, Aguas Frescas. Kayla, how are you? Hi, Ray. I'm doing well. Yeah, it's great to see you once again. Um, I'm sure you are preparing and getting ready for this uh, this round uh, for a couple days now. Do you think you're ready? You ready to present? I hope so. Let me get this uh, presentation up, though, real quick. All right, Kayla, your five minutes will begin now. As I was growing up, my grandpa would come home from work with bags full of fruit from the fields, overripe because he couldn't stand to just let them go to waste. These fruits would be blended into non-sparkling water and sugar and end up as sweet drinks known as aguas frescas, or my personal favorite, sprinkled with chili powder for the family to enjoy, especially if there was a party and there was always a party. As an adult, I took those practices into my own home and I wanted that same experience of our culture and celebration without all the sugar. So I set out to make my family's traditions in a modern and meaningful way. The result is Agua Bonita, a unique beverage experience that is first of its kind, using no added sugar or chemical sweeteners in our blends, and sometimes even using spices to get those nostalgic flavors. It just so happens we're right on trend as culinary curiosity grows. And in the process of creating our drinks, we rescue produce and we give back to mission aligned nonprofits. But why does any of this matter? It matters because our sourcing practices allow us to create an entirely closed loop cycle that supports our longevity. We provide an extra revenue source for the farms we work with, but also have access to our core ingredients at a discounted rate. Those savings can be passed on to the consumer at scale. Real fruit is a powerful differentiator for us and our supply chain allows us to access real fruit in abundance and affordably while simultaneously supporting the migrant farm labor that makes it possible. We're actually headquartered where 60% of the nation's produce is grown, which means you don't have to worry about our supply running dry. A massive bonus is that with this practice, we're on track to save upwards of 14 million pounds of produce by 2023. And that is a powerful driver for the conscious consumers who come across our brand. Agua Bonita is not just filling an environmental need though. We're filling a huge white space in the ready to drink market. While drinks in other categories are either made with artificial ingredients or have upwards of 79 grams of sugar per serving, we sit right in the middle as an all natural option that consumers can grab. We're the only non-carbonated real fruit juice and water blend that uses no added or chemical sweeteners. This means that even if we didn't identify as an agua fresca, we're still addressing a missing component of the current competitive landscape. We're also priced accordingly, sitting in between the price points of an enhanced water on one side and a cold pressed juice on the other to reflect the average 50-50 split of juice and water we have. We have about five times more real fruit than the most comparable beverage in the market. Aguas Frescas, as we're defining them, a bridge between the juice blend market and water market, are a multi-billion dollar opportunity to create a new ready-to-drink category at large. The Hispanic shopper alone commands over $1.7 trillion in spending power. But Agua Bonita is not just for Hispanic consumers. It's for any consumer wanting a great culinary experience without any junk, which is why our product has mainstream adoption potential, just like other cultural drinks that have assimilated, like kombucha and matcha. In fact, the Aguas Frescas category is already up in popularity by almost 200% since 2010 in restaurant format. Agua Bonita is experiencing explosive growth because our passionate and valuable consumers welcoming us into their homes. Our shelf stability and launching with the direct-to-consumer model helped us achieve that. And in just a few months, we've reached thousands of customers and counting, have a high repeat purchase rate, and an online presence that is steadily growing. And while our online debut was well-received, we realized the limitations of a direct-to-consumer model. 
which is why we're steadily expanding our retail presence. So anyone, anywhere can grab us at your local store. We're available now in boutique retailers in San Diego and Texas that focus on healthy or craft options. And as we grow, being offered in multi-packs at traditional retailers like Kroger, who we've partnered with in their Zero Hunger, Zero Waste initiative, and availability in the convenience store channel will be the cornerstone of our success. Strategic partnerships are also supporting our growth. You'll see us working in conjunction with beverage incubation programs to launch Agua Bonita in up to 300 key accounts like Whole Foods, Sprouts, and many others across Southern California. And in partnership with Beyond Meat, United Airlines, and others, you'll see lots of unique introductions to Agua Bonita. Our current offerings include watermelon chile, that is getting a spicier upgrade at the next production run, and pineapple cucumber, with two new flavors debuting soon. We're decidedly non-sparkling for the time being, in line with tradition, but do have aspirations for a bubbly Bonita lineup in a slim packaging format, similar to brands that have come before us. And with roots that mirror those brands with hefty acquisitions, we're ready to turn Agua Bonita into the next billion dollar brand and take home the title of best new beverage. Salud. Salud indeed, Kayla, very well done. Uh, Vanessa, let's start with you. Uh, Kayla mentioned that she can see, she can see Aguas Frescas uh, assimilating like kombucha could. Uh, as someone who has been on the front lines and pioneering this category within the United States, uh, would you agree? I would. Um, I, first off, Kayla, great job. I love this product, uh, the flavor profiles. I don't think there's anything quite like it on the market right now. So the addressable market is pretty big for you. Um, I think the, the distribution piece will be interesting. I think the biggest hurdle you'll have is where you want it merchandise in store. Um, I think there's certainly probably consumers out there who will want it though. Yeah, um, John, you've tasted a lot of products. We've seen a few uh, Aguas Frescas products come into the offices uh, over the past few years. How does uh, Agua Bonita compare to those and those that are not at all uh, part of that uh, segment, ones that it will eventually be competing with on shelf as Vanessa mentioned? Yeah, I mean, I think from a taste perspective, it's it's really good. Um, you know, I was honestly kind of surprised for that exact reason that you mentioned, Ray, which is, you know, having tried other ones that are a lot of times just sweet and, I don't know, not so good. This this is like kind of light and refreshing and tastes more like a fresh Aguas Fresca. Um, I think, you know, that being said, I, you know, it's, it's kind of, a question of like, where do the dollars come from that you're kind of stealing, you know, share from. And, you know, I think this is more of a, I don't know, juice play or something like that, as opposed to, you know, maybe something that's going to compete with stuff like buy uh, that you had on your slide there. Um, you know, I think outside of that, um, you know, it looks like there's still some packaging stuff in the works. Um, this had, you know, had to scan a QR code to get the ingredients. And honestly, I couldn't even see the word chili because it was so far down on the the sleeve label that it was like literally on the bottom but you know I think this is a pretty approachable like straightforward product that you know I feel like you just drink it because it tastes good there isn't really a lot of like explanation needed um, probably the only other thing um, is just you know on the ingredients on your website it's all fruit concentrates which I think that's something that seems a little against the grain in terms of like the rest of the story and just what other uh, you know, emerging brands are doing right now. So just something to think about, but uh, really tasty. So congrats. Priscilla, Kayla outlined some pretty ambitious um, goals and, and a pretty ambitious sort of vision for this company. Talked about uh, the filling environmental space and white space within the market, uh, a need for uh, a better environmental uh, type product. Um, you know, overall, what do you think of the presentation this vision that Kayla has for the brand um, and any questions that you might have for her based on what you heard today? Yeah, I mean, I think the there is an addressable market. Um, I grew up in San Diego. I was, from, I was born in Coronado. So I think there's certainly a market there for um, tapping into even in the grocery stores. Um, but I would say on the ESG front, um, there's also you know, a need on, on the packaging side. I think it could be also really interesting. I know, um, as John mentioned, to kind of speak to the, the differences on the, the labels. Um, you know, maybe there's some a play that you could have the lab, like without labels. Um, that could be really interesting. I did like the packaging, actually, the, the secondary tertiary packaging that it came in. It was pretty sleek. It was small and it was tiny. Um, 
which fit the the cans nicely. Um, and I think as you start to think about growing, um, you know, as you're going into these new partnerships of um, finding those that align with your ethos um, for ESG plays, I think there are a lot of grocery stores that do have the sustainable kind of natural market fit. Um, so I think that that could be really interesting for you um, as you continue to scale. Thank you. I will say we are going through a packaging update. I'm still keeping our design, but I've taken a lot of feedback into consideration as to like the call outs that need to be there and um, shifting some words around. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Um, in the meantime, let's hear from Dan. Dan, uh, Kayla talked about uh, Agua Bonita as being a traditional drink made modern. Um, you know, the Coca-Cola company and VEB in particular has looked at a lot of traditional drinks and uh, attempted to make them modern or at least uh, modern in terms of the mainstream contemporary consumer. Um, do you see uh, a, a real runway for Agua Bonita in that, in that sort of way? Yeah, I do. I, I, I think there's a huge runway for Agua Frescas. Um, I, I think that the, the, the advice I, I would give um, uh, this is, I love the packaging and, and, and aesthetic. I, I, think it's, um, I think it's really, really nice. I think the 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 um, I thought the presentation itself was really tight, and and the presentation and the pack and the package or the or the proposition um, probably should come a little um, uh, more closely linked, and, and because your story was beautiful, and I think the story the personal story of scarcity and the personal and then the and the nature story of scarcity or fruit um, should somehow come to life um, on on the on the package or at least in the brand story that would be um, really compelling. That the, the biggest is advice I, I have for, you know, for all um, products that, that sort of have a health channel launch to them is um, it's not where you start, but how you finish. And so the, the, the where you start, I think, is in the appropriate spot. When you say you want to be a billion dollar brand, the, the how you finish then is going to be around ensuring that this is really refreshing, very drinkable and um, used often. And so um, and that piece is, you know, I think. Um, if I if I look at the formulations that that um, for sure the cucumber um, was was really refreshing very very drinkable but you know uh, not to get too technical but on that you know, the turf and the flavor analysis of this is is when you go to those spices you know um, those probably become more occasional versus like really really um, drinkable so I would just um, you know I probably want to want to work a bit on the um, flavor formulation to bring it to this kind of where does it finish it finishes as a as a drink that can go mainstream in the August Fresca segment, and one that is very very drinkable and drunk often. All right, great feedback. Uh, well done, well done, Kayla. And my apologies for mispronouncing Agua Bonita. Uh, about I don't know, it's ten or twelve. How, how would you pronounce it? Oh, Agua Bonita. But I, if you like to say the G, go right ahead. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that to you because I think I'm going to mess it up. But anyway, great presentation. Well done. Thank you. All right. On to our next finalist for this round. That's Andreas Izquieta, who is the CEO of Chiki Chiki Boom Boom. Andreas, how are you? Great. Yourself? Doing well. Doing well. Excited to see your presentation. You got five minutes today. Just an, a lifetime of time to, uh, to, to sell your uh, vision to uh, the panel here. All right, Andreas, your five minutes will begin now. Hi. I'm Andres, the co-founder of Chiki Chiki Boom Boom. I started Chiki to move culture forward while inspiring to live better lives, empowering their health and impact on their planet and community. The vision, this vision led me three years ago on a journey to change the world and impact my culture and share one of the most beautiful treasures we have. I met my co-founder Juan in Los Angeles and we shared many common interests, along with both having parents from Ecuador and a love of our Latin roots. I've spent my entire career in the fashion space where I'm the co-founder of fashion conglomerate 54 Group that owns nine direct-to-consumer brands. While Juan's background is in agriculture and CPG in Ecuador, this led us to form a partnership where our visions aligned and complemented each other well. We wanted to merge our passions for reinterpreting what Latin food should be while having a strong voice, presence, and impact and evoking a feeling of fun and celebration, which is something that is missing in the better for you beverage space. In the south of Ecuador, there is a beverage that has been around for five centuries that is made up of functional herbs, flowers, and mountain alkaline water. People have been drinking this for different reasons, such as immunity and gut health, since its botanicals 
are considered to have some of the most powerful antioxidants in the planet. Meanwhile, in modern times, it also served another function. It was a low sugar, sweet tasting alternative drink that was also good for you and a replacement for drinking juice, tea, and soda that are usually filled with high sugar and bad ingredients. With, while the beverage is rich in flavor, it's as rich in its story. It comes from a valley called Vilcabamba, which sits in the middle of the world, just south of the equator, nestled between the Amazon and the Andes. The area is considered a blue zone where people live long lives, some past 100 years of age. Hence, its nickname has become the Valley of Longevity. The locals have been drinking this for 500 years and view this as the fountain of youth for all the health related benefits with the urban legend being for every day you drink this, you live one day longer. The origin of our water is single source mountain alkaline water from the Andes mountains that has gold, silver, magnesium, and iron. These mixing of core ingredients reminded us of a plant-based type of punch that we've never seen before, which is what led us to creating Chiki which was a slang term I had made up amongst my friends that represented celebration. Chiki Chiki Boom Boom. Our product is bottled at the source while being USDA organic, non-GMO and fair trade. We recently launched a beta test late last year during the pandemic in the LA area in accounts such as Erwan and Alfred. Meanwhile, we took these learnings and just relaunched this week in the Los Angeles market with four flavors while only being three grams of sugar, 20 calories and not compromising on sweetness and flavor. Flavor, flavor, flavor. I can't stress this enough. Ultimately, the majority of consumers repurchase your product because they like the taste. Our unique mix of botanicals mixed with our primary source of sugar, panela, provides a unique taste like none other. Panela is native to Latin America, which is a raw sugar that is unprocessed and unrefined. Hence, it contains vitamins, vitamins and minerals. The opportunity we see is the intersection of the following. One, iced tea and juice drinkers craving sweet taste without the super, super high sugar. Two, flavored water drinkers who want more kick and sweetness than just a hint of fruit. Three, people seeking, people seeking sweet flavor but do not want the natural sweeteners because of the displeasing aftertaste. And lastly, water drinkers seeking a guilt-free sweet tasting option. Some leading brands that sit at this intersection are Snapple, Hint, Honest Tea, and Buy. This puts our target market as adult millennials who crave a refreshing, and hydrating beverage with low sugar, sweet taste that they can drink daily and even multiple times a day, all while being a brand that, that evokes fun, celebration, and muchas, muchas vibras. We are classifying this as a punch for multiple reasons. When you view how this drink is made, it reminds you of how you make a classic American punch. People in Ecuador store this beverage in jars in their fridges, very similar to how we do in the US. This allows us to pursue consumers' nostalgia and a large white space in the reinvention of punch as a category but one filled with rich history, culture, community, and health. Due to the beverage's functional and emotional brand elements, it plays in a potential very large market opportunity. In addition, due to its cultural relevancy and appeal, it can gain market share with Latin millennials seeking, seeking emotions of pride and empowerment. L Latin Americans represent the largest ethnicity in the country, and in the last five years, Latin culture has become the new pop culture. The future is bright for Chiqui. We have a retail rollout taking place over the next few weeks in major cities such as Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and Chicago. Our team is split between U.S. and Ecuador while having experience at brands such as Kim Nori, Walch's, Health Aid, Olipop, and many more. Uh, Chiki is not just a beverage company. It is a beacon for a culture that will set new standards impacting the world one Chiki at a time. Gracias, stay Chiki, keep booming. All right, fantastic. Well done, Andres. John. Uh, let's get your thoughts on the taste of this product. Andrea said, flavor, flavor, flavor. Uh, and this is certainly not your father's fruit punch. Uh, tell us what you thought about this, the liquid itself. Yeah, I mean, the liquid's definitely very tasty. Um, you know, it's got a lot of flavor in there, low sugar. Um, you know, I think uh, I'm not totally yet convinced about the punch aspect of it. I, I think if you ask most people what they're tasting. It kind of tastes like a fruit flavored tea. Um, so I think, you know, it's just one of those, do you want to go down that path of trying to re-educate people on punch and re, you know, invigorating that, or just kind of going with the path of least resistance, which obviously has, you know, more competitors and whatnot. But um, I think either way, you know, at least the flavor that I tried, you know, it's, it's solid. It's, you know, definitely on trend with ingredients and low calories and whatnot. So, uh, definitely, uh, some nice work. 
Vanessa, Andreas mentioned that he wants to bring fun into the functional beverage space, or at least that there's an opportunity to bring fun into functional beverages. Um, do you see an opportunity there? And if so, what do you think of Chiki's uh, chances as being that brand to break through? 100%. Um, at Health Aid, we're all about the fun here too. And so when I think about infusing a little bit more personality, your personality, your story um, as to why you started it, I think consumers will really resonate with that. And I think the the uh, history behind why you start the name Cheeky Cheeky Boom Boom um, is, is really cheeky. Um, and I like that. I think there's definitely opportunity to bring more personality to the shelves. I think the challenge will be how you bring that to life when you're not the one voicing over the story um, and how that comes to fruition through just your product on the shelf. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, uh, Andreas outlined an opportunity to reach uh, uh, an intersection of several consumer bases um, and referenced some pretty iconic brands as being potential competitors for Cheeky Cheeky Boom Boom. Um, what do you think of how he sort of laid out that intersection and do you see you know an opportunity for it to potentially be compared to an honest tea a snapple etc i think the, the the prior comment really interesting the the man the brand and the liquid all stand up the package um still needs some work and and um and so and what i would i say by that is i think it can i think this could be now I look at you. You, you said um, Snapple, hint, honest, and and buy. Well, you know, I, I think this is a this could be a really um, this could be the most interesting cultural um, remix of Snapple. Um, you know, part of it is it, it's the package that leads me to, to 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 think that. But but the modernity of the of the culture into the into the brand I think really helps a lot. And it's just super fun, and it has to stay fun. You know, the um, the uh, I watch the online videos. My 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 kids um, spent a lot of time uh, um, annoying me and me back on the uh, chicky chicky boom boom, and then saying boom boom a number of different ways as it was there. They they also said a shout out. They loved your hoodie um, on the uh, on the on the video. But but I think you know this. It, it goes back to fun, not too serious. Um, and it's going to be, be able to craft that story, you know, because you got a lot in here. You know, there's the the Ecuador, and there's the, the heritage, there's the provenance place, and then you know, I think one of the one of the biggest things for, for consideration is, you know, um, uh, again, where you start and how you end is bottled at the source. You know, is 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 going to be a, a key consideration. I see this, you know, as a as a really fun, youthful um, uh, product play that that can um, you know be be in that addressable market of of what a, what a modern Snapple, uh, you know, could, could, could potentially look like. Something that's cheeky, fun, quirky, um, doesn't take itself too seriously. Dan, I just want to follow up on that real quick. Um, you know, you mentioned your kids love this brand. They thought it was really cool. Do you see this as better positioned as a kid's beverage or well positioned as a kid's I, beverage? I do. I think it's a youth beverage. You know, I think, I think, um, uh, and I think there's something about that, you know, this idea of longevity, not taking longevity so seriously of, you know, the hundreds and hundreds, but longevity is what you, you know, what you, you know, how you start, you know, with, with, um, uh, with kids and what's in your fridge. And, um, you know, I, I think there is something about this, you know, what do you call it? Fruit versus um, um, tea. But, but I, I, I think that, you know, the, 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 the not too sweet, um, not bitter, um, you know, they, they, they tasted these two. They, they said it tasted like a refreshing juice. You know, it had enough flavor in it that, that they would they would drink a lot of it. And, you know, and I, I feel really good about them them, them drinking it. So I, I, think it, um, I think it's just a lot of fun. It's very catchy. Mm -hmm. Priscilla, um, in terms of Andreas has mentioned that uh, they can take advantage of the emergence of Latin culture, which he called the, you know, has become pop culture. Um, do you see... Uh, you see that as a good strategy for this brand. You see this as an opportunity to uh, use its roots in Ecuador to promote itself as uh, a Latin beverage and embrace that Latin culture that he was talking about. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we at Science always think about brands as it's authenticity. That's that's one of our big theses. And I think I just like you, you are the brand, right? I think it, you see your passion, you're so excited about it, and, and you see it living through you. Um, and I, I think that was, you know, kind of the point that the other judges were making is, 
having that story stay consistent over time with the brand and as you get to other retailers and distribution, I think that's super important. I think your story in itself is what's going to sell. I think the videos are going to sell. Um, I, I do kind of agree in, in that it will potentially target you know more of a, a younger demographic. Um, but kind of just as I think about from an investment standpoint, um, you are authentic to the brand. And I think that Latin culture, and I think culture in general, no matter what background, I think is is having a movement right now. So um, there's certainly something to be said for that. All right. Well done. Great stuff. Great feedback. Great presentation. Uh, great work by all. Let's move on to our next finalist for the round. Uh, the next finalist that are that is Nick Sue and Terry Daly who are the co-founders of Avocado Milk. Nick, Terry, how are you? Good, good thank you. Great to see you again. Calling all the way from? New Zealand. New <laughs> Zealand. How are things in New Zealand? Crack of dawn. So, um, <laughs> it's a bit rainy today. Is there rain around? Yeah, a lot of rain. As we swim in avocados rolling down the street. <laughs> well done. Um, so, uh, you have five minutes to present. You ready to present? Yeah. Ready? All right, let's do it. Those five minutes begin now. Hi, I'm Nick. This is Terry. Uh, we're the founders of Avocado Milk. We're the guys with the really funny accents because we're a million miles away from New Zealand um, where something like COVID doesn't exist. Um, Avocado Milk, in terms of our mission, is to create the world's best natural good for you um, product using the phenomenal attributes of avocado. As you can probably tell by the way that we talk, um, we're really simple Simon guys, <laughs> and so and that's what avocado milk is. Um, everything about it is simple and clean. Um, basically, um, you know, avocados are the most unstable fruit in the world. Um, 300 million Americans or 25 million Australasians at some point in time of your life have chopped it in half, and it goes brown and powdery, let alone all the big um, price fluctuations, environmental impacts let alone how do you de-husk, de-cut, de-skin and milk an avocado um, at scale. So that took us years um, to, to basically unlock. So we've now got the world's first non-dairy avocado milk. That means that you can carry that anywhere. 92% um, of Americans class avocado as a superfood and eat on average 19 avocados a year, which is a lot of avocados per person. <laughs> and, and the Guinness Book of World Records names avocados as being the world's uh, healthiest superfood. Um, our product is 100% vegan, dairy-free, preservative-free, artificial colors and flavors-free and non-GMO. We've totally clean label with only six ingredients in there. 20% of an avocado, which matches your RDA is in every 12 ounce bottle and 40% in every 28 ounce bottle. Um, the brand's designed to add more products, which Terry's going to talk about. And we're at, we've won four global um, innovation awards across Europe, um, Asia, and Australasia. Our RRP is 399 um, for the 12 ounce and 599 for the 28 ounce. And we're proud to be responsible as well that we pay 20% above market rate to our growers um, for tag-free fruit, which would normally go to animal feed or waste. And um, all our farms are irrigated with rainwater only. That's why it's raining outside right now. And, um, and our bottles are 100% recyclable. Um, and we audit all our CO2 monthly and plant more avocado trees to offset any emissions that we create. We just wanted to give you a quick insight into what our strategy is around marketing the product. Um, short answer is we've got a very defined target audience. We're chasing after the healthy, good for you set, um, going 100% vegan, with avocado milk um, when we brought it to America was an absolute game changer for us. Um, and that's fitting perfectly into this, this audience set. We have a great social media um, work. We use a lot of influencers. We were on, we got onto the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon where, where he did thank you notes for us. Um, he did, used us four times, which was outstanding. Um, coming next um, is these three products. That This is the next set of drinks coming off the space for us. And the one that we're we're really excited about dark chocolate. One of our supermarket suppliers has asked us to produce that for them. Um, coffee is a, a, an obvious one that we've been trying to unlock and it's taken us a very long time to build this avocado milk barista version that you're seeing in front of you now, but that one is ready to go. So that's unlocked. That's meaning for the first time in the world, you'll be able to make an avocado milk coffee or a long white as we call them down here in New Zealand. Um, the, the objectives for us, the next steps for us is to increase our product range as we just showed you. We currently got two SKUs. Um, we, we need to produce that into eight and we've done all the, the product testing for that. 
we're increasing our retail footprint. Currently, we're in 900 stores in the US, um, and we're taking that to 3,000 stores in the next three years. We're going online with Amazon to, as a direct-to-consumer um, product and a couple of other food um, distribution products. We're going to be in top 10 supermarkets in refrigerated plant milk um, in the next three years, and we're going to continue to increase our social media and our media exposure um, as well. And that's us. Thank you. All right. Well done, Nick and Terry. Uh, Priscilla, let's start with you. You know, I asked the judges yesterday, the semifinal, uh, excuse me, a couple of days ago, semifinal round, semifinal round judges about uh, the, the opportunity for a novel type product within a, a still growing plant-based milk space. Um, and, you know, for someone who lives in L.A., I assume that uh, you have a sense that uh, there might be some demand for an avocado type plant based milk. Um, but, you know, what are your thoughts on on the, the this sort of uh, disrupting in uh, an already uh, fast growing uh, category like plant based milk? Yeah, I mean, I actually at one point when I was living in New York, I had a number of stomach allergies and had to go vegan. So I that was my first foray into plant based. Um, so I certainly went through a number of all the alternative milks and, and different options. Um, I do think there's an opportunity. And, and the reason why I say that is um, I'm actually allergic to certain milks, like alternative milks. I'm allergic to soy. I'm allergic to oat. Um, and so I think there is an opportunity to find, I mean, there, I'm probably maybe an anomaly, but, um, I do think one, there's a movement for plant-based Two, I think that there are a number of individuals who have certain dietary restrictions since, and thirdly, I, I do think that avocado as a superfood, I think there are a number of different use cases for avocado milk. And I think as you start to continue to expand your product line and your SKUs, I think there are a number of different use cases, not to just be kind of the alternative milk. You can be a number of different things. Um, and I think the last piece that I really loved about the product as well, I'm looking at the social media is you also had recipes um, to incorporate into other types of food. So I thought that was a really interesting angle. John, I have a feeling that viewers at home will be wondering what this tastes like, what the texture is like. Um, you know, from a viscosity standpoint, uh, is is this just, you know, like a more of a smoothie? Is it actually more of a milk that you would see traditionally in this space? Um, does it taste like avocados? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, looking at this, the second ingredient is oats. So, I mean, I guess this seems sort of like avocado flavored oat milk is probably what one would, you know, conclusion one would jump to. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, it's, it, is more thin like, or lower viscosity, like other dairy, or sorry, lower viscosity, like other plant milks. Um, and, you know, I think in the way that you guys were describing it, you know, as this being an alternative to like eating an avocado, or I don't know, think of things like guacamole, you know, this is not a replacement for that. It's just kind of a different use of uh, avocado. Um, I think, you know, just in sort of the deck there, talking about avocado milk and it only having 20% of an avocado, like, you know, something seems like a little bit of a disconnect, um, in terms of like, you know, the premise of the brand and what's actually in the liquid, uh, that being said, you know, I think the brand is, is killer. You know, it, it catches the eye. Uh, I think, you know, the flavor is, is pretty close, like definitely with like a little more avocado to it personally, but, um, you know, I think it, it's definitely some good liquid. Um, you know, I, I do wonder, uh, you know, I guess to Priscilla's point about being allergic to oats, like, is there going to be an awareness issue that this is an oat based product? Um, and will consumers care? And will this just appeal to a subset of consumers who like oat milk or something else? Uh, you know, a lot of questions there. Vanessa, uh, Terry and Nick talked about uh, identifying a problem. And Priscilla talked a bit about this, you know, uh, in that there are some people who can't drink current versions of plant-based milk on the market. Um, but the, the key to this game is scale, right? I mean, do you see avocado milk as a scalable proposition? It, truthfully, I question that. Um, it, obviously, we're seeing the astronomic growth of oat milk. Um, I, I guess I wonder, I never thought you could make milk from avocados, truthfully. Um, so I don't think it's something that someone thinks about until it's available, like you guys have made here. 
Um, so I don't know, um, Priscilla might be one of maybe a handful of people that's really kind of in this market of who you might be going after. Um, and I wonder if this is the uh, preferred way that people want to consume their avocados. Um, what I find interesting is that the superfood aspect of avocados that you mentioned um, could be a, a route to go here to make it a little bit more um, scalable in terms of the superfood route, but I don't find any allusion to the avocado superfood connection on the packaging. So that may be something to think about. And Dan, uh, you get the last word here. We heard a lot at the beginning of the presentation about the environmental benefits of this brand and of these products. Um, do consumers, are consumers going to gravitate toward that, do you think? I mean, is that going to be a, a key reason for them to buy this product? Yeah, I, I don't. Um, I, I think um, table stakes, sure. Um, differentiating, may, maybe not. That the, you know, but, but I think it's is it, interesting about this is you know that that what you have to believe in this brand, you know, um, is that I guess the analog for me as I as I keep thinking about it is it's tomatoes to ketchup, you know. So like ketchup is not it is if you really think about it tomatoes, but it's kind of not. And so does this become avocados? And it really is, but it's, but it's kind of not, but, it, but also carries, you know, some of those um, health, health benefits. And, and, and so I think one of the things that, that sort of, um, that I think is probably the most compelling is it is um, well known or, you know, well regarded that avocados are, are the good fats, you know? So this idea of getting your good fats um, in more ways than guacamole and avocado toast, you know, is um, I think could be could be compelling. I think what what the um, what I always wonder uh, about this, and I've been proven wrong, so I'm no no uh, you know uh, expert on this. But but I, I think it's it's what what I what I see about these categories. It's it's sort of um, you know uh, it's like coconut uh, water for us. Um, we, we didn't do so good, but 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 people have done well with it, and I think. What we want to look at is, is it a cat? Does it grow into a category, a significant category, or is it an ingredient? And I think the brand promise, the brand positioning here says that that it could be, you know, the first in a category. And there's there's something to be said about that. Now, how you move people to 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 wanting to to use this, there's quite a bit of I think education that's going to be required in order to to be able to do that. Or great product placement, as you said, with with with, with coffee. But I think this idea of getting your good fats um, in a way. Uh, you know, through 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 liquid um, could be something that's that's really good. And then then you know, finally back to the the the, the question around the the sustainability piece. There's something about your 2020s. You know, you, it, um, and just to oversimplify, you said there's 20% of, of of the of the product is is avocado milk, and then all other. And, and you said there's 20% back to the growers. And there there may be a story that you can kind of you know talk about you know how that makes up the whole you know uh, um, piece of it. So as you as you work to to ensure that people understand what the product, you know, use is, is going to be about there. There could be something about rounding up that story. All right. Some great feedback and advice, uh, Nick and Terry. Well done. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, at the crack of dawn. You can go back to sleep now. Uh, well, hold, actually hold on. Don't go back to sleep for at least another hour or so. Uh, and maybe you'll be celebrating all night after this, but uh, we'll see. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. All right. On to our final finalists for this round of New Beverage Showdown 21. We have Dutch Buckley, Chris Conway, and Jose Maria Silvestrini, who are the co-founders of Happy Being. Gentlemen, how are you? Hey, everyone. How are you doing? Great to see Thanks you once again. Us. Yes, and congratulations on winning the audience vote uh, in, in uh, our semifinal round. Happy Being the winner of the audience vote. Uh, now it's time to present. You guys have five minutes. Are you ready to go? Yeah, yeah we're ready, ready to go. All right, your five minutes begin now. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having us. I'm Chris, along with Dutch and Jose Maria. We created the healthiest beverage on the market today. Happy Being Healthy is a line of organic white teas infused with nutrients to support your immune system and your microbiome, all while fighting inflammation. Our concept is to take the best stuff from cold pressed juice, multiply the nutrients and cut out the sugar. Specifically, we isolate and extract the active nutrients found in fruits and vegetables and infuse them into each of our bottles. That's how we got each bottle to be nutritionally equivalent to 962 cups of blueberries, 
while only having two grams of organic cane sugar and being under 35 calories. Each of our bottles has a range of functional ingredients from vitamin D to elderberry to EGCG and turmeric. What they all have in common is that they're in the studied amounts shown to promote health at a cellular level. And they're all in the correct forms to maximize bioavailability. And that way, when we can say that this is healthy, that way, when we say this is healthy, we can actually mean that it's really healthy. We're different because we're taking the marketing appeal and design of the CPG world and melding it with the scientific rigor of the supplement world mm -hmm. to create a brand and products that really epitomize health, convenience, and design. So the three of us started this company because we've all had different family health issues over the years, and we really wanted to make a set of products that could help the people that we love. That's why as a brand, we believe that everyone deserves products that help them live a long, happy, and healthy life. We're research-backed. We pay attention to clinical data. We're relationship-based. We prioritize creating two-way conversations with our customers, and we're doctor-recommended. We work with top integrative docs. We're very fortunate to have our medical director, our medical director, Dr. Jerry Lamol, a renowned cardiovascular surgeon and author. Also, world-class integrative gastroenterologist, Leo Gallon. Both of these doctors are world experts on the use of specific nutrients for chronic disease. Yeah. And as a brand, we really want to be available to help answer any health questions, curiosities, concerns from our customers. That's why every subscriber has access to a dedicated SMS line that lets them communicate with us directly. We also try to maintain that same level of customer service across all our channels. Our core customer is the 35 to 55 year old who is active, educated, and fueled by the belief that 60 is the new 50, 50 is the new 40, and 40 is the new 30. Ultimately, they're looking for products that will help them thrive physically and feel younger for years to come. We're currently distributed across the Mid-Atlantic in stores like Mom's Organic Market, Kimberton Whole Foods, Equinox, and a bunch of other retailers. From a pricing perspective, our MSRP is $5.95, providing us a 57% margin. That's assuming a 35% wholesale margin and a 30% distributor margin. We're very interested in providing value. That's why one bottle is nutritionally equivalent to 962 cups of blueberries. That would cost you over $1,600. We know this is a lot of science and it's heady stuff. So we've been fortunate to partner with the creative minds behind Warby Parker, Peloton, Hims, Harry's, and host of other top consumer brands called Partners in Spade. With their help, we're creating a lifestyle brand that really tries to communicate both verbally and visually what a healthy lifestyle truly means in an attractive, accessible way. Our brand voice is vibrant, human, friendly, bold, modern, and informed. Our plan going into this was to execute a pilot and proof of concept before consolidating our plans and really accelerating our growth. This winter, we did a pilot with about 250 customers, took their feedback, improved on the product, and since March, we've been in a retail proof of concept in the Mid-Atlantic. We're focused primarily on the natural channel along with cafes and fast casual restaurants. The plan is to continue the proof of concept through the rest of the summer. Going into the fall, we'll work with distributors like Kihi to target key accounts like Whole Foods, Sprouts, Equinox, and Era One. the idea being to really own and dominate in the natural channel before we go and expand our product line. Since March, we've done well over $60,000 in sales and we're opening new accounts on a weekly basis. In grocery, we're selling about a case per store per week. Our goal is 18 units per store per week and we'll continue honing our in-store marketing efforts to reach that threshold. In addition to grocery, we're focusing on what we call unorthodox sales points. Those being cafes, fast casual restaurants, gyms and offices. We like this channel because we've seen early success and we think it's a great way for us to meet our consumers where they already are. We're speaking right now with Starbucks, Juice Press and a host of other brands to partner with in the coming months. Yeah, and our idea is to, one, we've launched this initial immunity line, which we think is the best in the market, but the plan is to expand to a sports drink, to expand to something to help with cognitive function and stress management and a product to help with sleep. That way we're covering all of the real key areas and pillars of health that a customer could be looking for. And with that, we'd just like to say thank you. We're happy being. Cheers to your health. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Well done. You know, I was I was a little worried about having you know uh, three founders on uh, in, in this uh, competition in the same round, um, and you guys did a great job. Well done, Vanessa. Let's start with you. Um, you know, the founders talked quite a bit about. Uh, their sales performance and outlining a plan to go to market and expand distribution. Um, for an early stage brand, uh, what do you think of those numbers? What do you think of that strategy? Yeah, actually, as you were talking through this, guys, I was saying, what are, what are the turns at 595 
SRP and, you know, 12 ounce, that's seemingly pretty hefty. Is someone sipping this and getting this occasionally or um, are the, are the turns strong enough? And you definitely proved that question in my mind. Um, I would say around two cases per week at your best store. And I would say worst around like 12 to 16 units. That's pretty strong in your, in, in these early stores. So congrats to you guys. Um, I guess I would say it's really about how that velocity continues as you scale out to not just these Uber um, high profile stores, very natural focused, where I think that consumer is probably well informed on what the product could be for them. Um, but really great start from the get go guys. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, uh, from the get-go, the presentation noted that uh, they're trying to take the best of cold-pressed juice, uh, multiply the nutrients, and uh, take out the sugar. Um, that seems like a winning proposition to me. But uh, you know, what do you get from uh, from Happy Being? Yeah, this is this is um, interesting. It's a little bit paradoxical to me because I, I want to love this, um, and and I, I think um, what and so what I what I do love, I love the science behind it. I love um, I love the branding. Um, I, I think that um, there, there's, there's something that I, I have to kind of resolve, which is that it, it feels too technical for the whimsy, you know, and so the, the whimsy of happy being and, and kind of that, you know, um, happiness of it, that there's, there's this technical aspect that kind of hangs, hangs over it. And so, you know, the, the, the and then the, the, the last piece of it that, that um, you know, that, that I want to try to, to resolve is the 595 a bottle, you know, um, and that um, I would be really hung up on that. The the uh, this is the the bottle itself and the design is is actually you know beautiful. The product itself is is very um, tasty. I think about this as the can you know this is a can in the hand beverage. In other words, you know something you're proud to hold and want to be seen with. Um, and and I think um, yeah, I don't know what the cost of goods are you know in it, but but there's a there's a premiumness that's associated with that that. That that feels like on the on the five ninety five you you could you could become a, you know a bit more approachable on so so what I what I would what I would say is um, yeah I love I love the proposition I, I think the 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 issue for me is is there's a paradox between what's being communicated on the technical side of the product um, versus how that links up with the whimsy um, side of the product and you know I think um, partners in Spade you know great agency. You know, um, there's a lot in a Peloton that we don't talk about. You just ride it, um, and it, and it's and you and, you, um, and there's a lot of benefit from that that we don't kind of get into. And and sometimes you want to bring people to the, you know, bring the people to the ocean to have them have them kind of look at it. And for those that want to dive in, you know, um, offer that up as well. And achieving that balance can be really important. Um, but 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 that said, is that you know, happy being, love it. Um, and I and I love the um, I love the simplicity of the of the product. I love the um, the, the, the promise of it. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. And, and just you. to touch on the price point also, you know, part of the reason we're at that level is just, you know, zero scale. As we get bigger, we'll be able to drop that down to something more relatable. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a beautiful way. And, and, you know, um, for, forgive me on that, you know, we, Coke doesn't do scarcity well, but there, there is, there's a, there's a strategy behind that, that I think is really smart. Uh, and so don't, so don't, um, don't don't take that one away as 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 a as a piece um, other than just the observation that the, the brand itself is really compelling. I'd love to see it in a lot of people's hands, and I, I know they'd love to have it there. Quote of the competition: Coke doesn't do scarcity well. Well done, <laughs> <laughs> um, Priscilla. You know, based on what I've seen from Science Ventures portfolio, it seems like you guys invest in brands that could become iconic, that could reach iconic status. Uh, based on what you've seen, and uh, it's still really early for Happy Being, but do you think it has that potential uh, in the same way that your other brand, other brands in your portfolio uh, do? Yeah, and I, I mean, I also looked at your social and Instagram, and I think that there's a lot of um, lifestyle that's being put in. Um, and I do think, you know, a lot of the ways that we think about these early brands, it's an iterative process um, in building that brand and the community around it. So it's it's really honing in on who are those, who is your community? Um, and really identifying, I think, through through your images, through your story, um, and maybe this is kind of tangential to to Dan's point, right? Are you focused on those that are more technical? Are you focused on those that are, it's more is it more lifestyle? I think that's that's something to kind of focus in on, and then you can go you can go deep and hard into those. Um, 
into those areas. And I think, um, you know, once you identify who your target market is um, and you have influencers around that space, I think you'll start to develop, you know, UGC, you'll start to develop kind of your persona around that brand. And that's how you really start to get scale at the D2C level. But does it taste good? I can hear viewers yelling at you right now. Ray, does it taste good? John, does it, what do you think of the taste? Um, it's it's pretty good. I, I think I tried two of the flavors. Um, you know, it tastes like iced tea, which, you know, I think reading the copy on the back before I actually cracked it open, I was like, oh man, like what's this going to taste like? You know, I'm not looking for to eat a million blueberries. Just give me a tasty bottle of tea. And, you know, I think this is kind of to what Dan was saying earlier. There's just, there feels like there's this, I don't know, paradox here um, that you guys need to resolve a little bit. But, um, you know, I think the liquid inside is, I would say tasty enough uh, for a product that's a functional product. Um, it's just a matter of dialing in, you know, the rest of it, the messaging, you know, don't scare me away. Um, I think that's kind of where I'd leave it. All right. Gentlemen, once again, uh, great job um, and great feedback from the judges. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it so much. All right. You know, I can't believe it. Uh, that's uh, essentially the end of the pitches. That is, that is the end of the pitch part of what we do uh, for the New Beverage Showdown. Uh, it's been an amazing two days of pitches. So great to see how these early stage brands are tackling uh, new opportunities in the market via innovative and disruptive uh, formulations and brands. Uh, it's so much fun to do this. Um, but I do want to ask our judges, you know, in terms of uh, just a general sense of things that these brands could improve upon when they are doing their next pitch to retailers, to investors, et cetera, uh, what are some of the things that they should look out for as they are uh, moving on to that next stage? Um, Priscilla, from an investment standpoint, um, you know, what are some things that you really liked uh, out of these presentations, what are some of the things that you think these brands should hone in on the next time they are uh, presenting in front of someone like yourself? Yeah, no, I think a lot, a lot of it was touched in, in kind of certain pieces of the presentations. And I think from an investor standpoint, things that we would look at, obviously mission driven founders, do you have that passion? Do you align with your brand? Um, and the second would be on metrics, you know, what does metrics, this is also for social, like what does that virality of the consumers look like? And also on the wholesaler side. Um, and then I think in terms of metrics as well, like what do the financials, I think those are, that's important to think about, um, you know, where your price point is and what those margins potentially look like and, and how that looks in terms of scaling, um, going forward. And then the last piece is, um, uh, the partnerships and where you're looking to scale that and what the potential exit kind of uh, pathway would be, um, because I think that gives you kind of like a holistic view of here's your brand, here's your vision, here's where we are to date in terms of metrics, and here's where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Dan, it felt like you were emotionally invested in hearing some of these presentations and, and you know, tasting some of these products and seeing some of these brands, um, which is kind of interesting because I think some people might look at the Coca-Cola company and say, no, they, they're, you know, it's a cookie cutter kind of approach to investing and, and aligning with brands. But, you know, how much did, does emotion play into you, those decisions? Yeah, I guess it is I'm a little bit of a sucker, but I, but I, <laughs> but I do think, you know, but, I, but here's, here's the thing. I mean, you know, um, uh, you, you buy, you buy people's beliefs, you know, when they can, and when they can have you believe and they can, you know, deliver a brand at a proposition that, you know, that works and they can get behind. Um, it's really great. You know, we, we, we have a saying that, you know, that that's always very difficult, which is, you know, you don't want to fall in love with the founder, right? Um, because you want to fall in love with the large addressable market that the category has. But it's, it's very difficult to, you know, to, to, to disconnect that. And, you know, I think it's one of the beauties of entrepreneurialism and then also of the beverage business that, that, that people can, you know, make, make something that, that, you know, someone's going to like enough, trust it. And, you know, it's one thing to like something enough and, and, and buy it. It's another thing to like enough something enough and then trust it enough to drink it. And, you know, I think there's something really um, compelling. And that's what's beautiful about the beverage industry overall. Mm -hmm, indeed. John, uh, there was a, there's an old saying that you only get uh, one chance to make a good impression. I think I'm butchering that uh, quote, but, uh, um, you know, having tasted products, you know, beverages for the past 25 years and seen brands for the past 25 years, you know, do you want the best, do you want the best tasting product, the best looking package right out of the gate? Or, um, you know, are you willing to, 
I guess, live with a little bit of leeway when it comes to early stage brands. And especially now, when what we're seeing is so polished from a lot of brands, from a lot of companies, do you need to be great right out of the gate? Um, I don't know if you need to be great right out of the gate. I think it's, you know, a balance of the different, you know, sort of attributes that you mentioned. And I think on top of that, you know, what I always think is most important is a founder and a team that are willing to learn and adapt. And, you know, I think that's something that, you know, if you look at a lot of the brands that have, you know, been successful, even, you know, health aid, uh, it would be a good example, you know, things have changed since the beginning and, you know, they're obviously learning a lot and they have, you know, means to do things that they didn't in the early days. And, you know, I think that's, that's something that all of these founders, you know, should think about is just, you know, they're like, the starting line and, you know, the finish line's like a oh, way, way, ways away. They can't even see it yet. So I think, you know, just be ready to get out there and continually, you know, make it better and listen to feedback and, you know, evolve as you go. Vanessa, you offered some feedback uh, or some advice in terms of how the finalists could prepare or could uh, pitch to you guys as judges and to our audience. Um, you know, you, ha you have done an incredible job at HealthAid of scaling from that small brand back in 2013 into uh, a brand that's nearing iconic status. Um, if you have any advice for these founders um, to get to the kind of position you are in right now, what would it be? Yeah, I would say, um, although, you know, selling your metrics may be really important to an investor or to a retailer, I go back to HealthAid's tagline, which is follow your gut. Um, to, to John's point, like, you can't see the finish line right now. You can barely see like 10 feet in front of you. <laughs> and so, um, you know, that next decision is going to come and you're not going to know what the F to do, but you're just going to have to pivot and figure it out. You're going to have to iterate your product. Um, God knows how many times you're going to have to create packaging refreshes. Um, and the best thing that you can lend to is why you created this in the first place what you're trying to do with it from, you know, the foundations of what, what this product means in the, in the bigger sense, and just go back to the why and just follow your gut in making this is these decisions, because ultimately that's what you got you here. Uh, that's what's going to get you there. Indeed. Great advice. Uh, phenomenal job to all our semifinalists and finalists. Um, Tough, tough, tough competition as always, um, but the judges are going to convene right now and deliberate and pick a winner. Speaking of the judges, uh, thank you so much. This outstanding panel, uh, I think uh, viewers at home and our, our finalists are just so lucky to have all four of you participate in this. Thank you so much for all your contributions. Um, as I mentioned, our judges are going to go deliberate and pick a winner. We're going to announce that winner at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Stay tuned for that. Also stay tuned for interviews with the founders of the most recent winners of the New Beverage Showdown. That's Moment and Kite. We'll be doing 10-minute interviews with each of those. And we'll also be doing a 10-minute interview with the winner of this competition, New Beverage Showdown 21. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you shortly.
Welcome back. Uh, it is now time, or almost time, to announce the winner of New Beverage Showdown 21. That winner will receive this brand spanking new trophy and a $10,000 ad package. The judges are still deliberating on that winner, and we will have an answer pretty soon. But in the meantime, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to invite some special guests for interviews uh, about what they've been doing since they won the New Beverage Showdown, beginning with Aisha Chotani, who is the co-founder of Moment and the winner of New Beverage Showdown 19. Aisha, how are you? Hi, Ray. So good to be here. I am really well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing even better now that I'm speaking with you. Uh, you won the showdown back in June 2020. Uh, it's just an incredible, momentous year it's been for everyone. I'm sure it's been the same for you guys and then some. Um, you know, for folks who might not be familiar with Moment, maybe didn't see the showdown, tell us a bit about the brand and the beverage. Definitely. And to your point, it has been the most exciting, adventurous year of my life, for sure. So just to just to give an intro, Moment is a natural botanical beverage that helps you reduce stress. And our combination of adaptogens and nootropics replicates the same effect as meditation, activating your brain waves and reducing your cortisol levels. And, you know, you need this kind of product or everyone needed this kind of product over the past year. Uh, I have to that, imagine that uh, there was a lot of interest in your brand, not just after the showdown, but well after the showdown. I mean, you know, to be able to relax and have your body at ease over the past 12 months has not been easy. That's right. That's 100 percent. It's been such a stressful year for a lot of people. And for us, what has been really uh, exciting is the impact that we've been able to create uh, for our community. People have found it a lot of um, comfort uh, with Moment. In fact, customers sometimes email me two page long emails sharing the effect that Moment is having on their lives. And that's, that's what is keeping us going and so excited. So many things have been going on for the company uh, since June. Uh, I, I did, there's just a list of amazing things that you guys have accomplished. Let's start with uh, a pretty big appearance for you guys on a small tv show called shark tank <laughs> that's yeah that that's 100 percent right we aired on shark tank in november last year in november 2020 which was a super super exciting time um because it helped us get in front of thousands of new thousands if not millions of new customers and 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 really scale our production and to your point it's been so exciting because we've really been able to help people given everything people have been going through yeah so um i i think there are probably some people that missed that episode how'd you do we did really well. Uh, the shocks love the product. Um, as Laurie said, I can't believe it tastes so good and has all the effect with only nine calories. Um, it was it was it was a really good time, um, and uh, the sharks loved it. The customers loved it. People reached out to us from all over the country, all over the world. There were people from other countries uh, reaching out and saying, "Hey, when can we try a moment?" Um, so it was, it was a, it was a really, it was a really good time. Yeah. It, it seems like it opened the door. Well, Shark Tank, but mostly the new beverage showdown really opened the door to new distribution and other opportunities, uh, for moments. One of the most amazing things that you told me, um, is that you guys are already in hundreds of CVS stores with moment, which is really awesome. Talk about that partnership with CVS. Why is, and why is the retailer the right one for your brand? That's right. Actually, that was um, one of the great things uh, that happened right after the, uh, right after a win last year, we started conversations with CVS and given their focus on mental and physical health, they're actually converting CVSs into a health hub format. And our product, given, uh, given that we are addressing the mental health issue, but also the product is just really healthy with no added sugar, all natural ingredients. And so it fit really into the health innovation campaign. And uh, we did a small trial. It went really well. So now we're scaling into about 1,500 CVSs by the end of the year. This is really, really, really exciting. 
And we've had retail interest from other retailers that we are currently working with in conversations with. So more to come on that. But the CVS, um, we are ramping up. Uh, at this point, we're in 500 and going to go to 1500 by the end of the year. That is amazing. Congratulations on that. That explains why you're currently at your production facility right now. Folks, <laughs> viewers didn't see earlier, uh, Aisha was uh, trying, to, trying to stream from her production, from the floor of the production facility. And it looked like cans were flying by, there were boxes being <laughs> filled, lots going on. Uh, what are the distribution? Where else are you distributed? Uh, and where else have you been able to get distribution since uh, June of last year? Yeah, so a lot of exciting things have happened since June of last year um, on the online front. So we built an infrastructure to be online, given the given the lockdowns and how much customers wanted us during it. We are we have our own um, direct to customer um, website where people have been buying very easily and quickly. We are on Amazon and we are on a bunch of other uh, platforms online. On the retail side, we are in about 500 CVSs. We're in about 200 stores in New York and Brooklyn, which is where Moment started. And uh, we're in about 150 uh, other cafes um, around the country. We are now scaling up um, and having conversations to enter new cities uh, along with a couple of other retailers. So more to come. Stay tuned. Outstanding. The, uh, the no, one no, please, other, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. The one other thing that has happened is uh, we did a cross collaboration uh, with Victoria's Secret Pink um, last year where we where we had a moment of pink can. Uh, we formulated a new flavor with them. And um, that went really, really well. Within uh, two days of our initial release, we sold out. Um, and it was a really, really, really exciting partnership. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Um, and I wonder how much of that type of partnership uh, amplifies awareness about your brand. Um, and, you know, a partnership like that, it amplifies awareness, I, I would say, I would think to a specific consumer, that Victoria's Secret consumer. Um, but has your vision at all shifted in terms of who this target consumer, or who the target consumer is for a moment? Uh, I, I imagine that it probably has a little bit. It has helped us zoom in into, um, it has helped us zoom into the target customer. Um, really, we are on this journey of helping people be more mindful and towards having a holistic approach to health, both uh, physical and mental. And um, currently our target customer is people that, um, that have already started on the health journey and understand that a little bit. Uh, we are focused on them first before we uh, move into a broader audience and help everyone around the country. Mm -hmm. um, I have to say that when I tried Moment, I really, really loved the taste of the product. And I loved it because it was it, one of the reasons why I loved it, I think, was because it was cold. It was refreshing. It was relaxing. There was a lot going on. Um, when you are looking for distribution, how much of it, how much do you impress upon your retail partners that you want to be in the cold case? And how do you convince them to be in that cold case? That's right. Um, moment is best enjoyed chilled. Um, and that's really, Obviously. really critical. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, in certain cases, um, we are able to be in the cold um, immediately. But in certain cases with big retailers, um, given we are still just a one year old brand, they want to give a they want to do a trial and see how customers how their customers react. Uh, and so sometimes they will offer to have us in the um, in the non cold section of the, the, the store. And that is okay because for us, it is an opportunity. It's a way to show them, Hey, your customers are going to love it. And then we graduate to the cold shelf. Um, it's also a great way to learn and understand how to work with that retailer before we move into the cold shelf. Um, which of course is often, um, full of, um, other existing brands, um, mm -hmm. which are big corporates. So, it's, it, I, I think, you know, you need to take it case by case. It's great to be on the cold shelf, uh, but where the opportunity is right, it's okay to start off with the non cold shelf and graduate into the cold shelf. Mm -hmm. We got a bit of a minute left, Aisha, and I'm so happy to, and so, so excited to see how you're doing and how the brand is progressing. Um, I, I, I got to think that the next half of the year um, is a really important one in terms of sampling and demos, because now that the 
country has opened up, largely opened up, and it's opened up completely in New York City. Now's your chance to introduce the brand Liquid to Lips um, and really get the brand in people's hands. What is the plan? That's right. Uh, sampling is a critical part of our, a part of our plan um, in New York right now. So if you're out and about on the streets, I'm going to give you a list of places we're going to be sampling in. Um, our team is out there every weekend in different stores. Um, now that uh, now that we can now that people are coming out, um, and that's the plan as we launch into a new city, which I'll tell you once we finalize the conversations, I'll tell you about. But the plan is to uh, sample, 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 uh, so our customers can understand um, the brand and all the goodness that comes with it. Outstanding. Well, I am so delighted that we had this opportunity to speak. Uh, I hope we can speak in person, perhaps at BevNet Live Winter 2021 in Santa Monica. Definitely. That's so, so exciting. I can't wait to be there. Yeah, I can't wait to see you. Thank you so much once again for joining us today. Congratulations again on all your success uh, to this point. and wish you all the success going forward. Thank you so much for all the support. It's been great to have you all be a part of our journey. Yes, it's, it's our honor. All right, uh, we have another special guest. Uh, that is the winner of New Beverage Showdown 20. One of the co-founders is with us. That's Claudia Marion, the co-founder of Kite. Claudia, how are you? Hi, Jerry. how are you? I'm doing so well, so well. Thanks so much for asking. How are you? Pretty good, yeah. Lots happening with the Kite team lately. As you notice, um, Michelle's absent today. Um, she really, really wanted to be here, but she had a baby yesterday. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, she passed up the New Beverage Showdown live interview for a baby? Come on. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. We took the show, sorry, again. <laughs> it's it, yeah, totally understandable, but it's so great to have you on the show. On brand too, I love the Kite t-shirt. Well done on that, very good. Um, again, you know, I think, there are probably a handful of people who may not know what Kite is, you know, despite uh, all the things that you guys have been doing over the past six months. Just, just to give us a refresher, what is Kite? What do you guys do? Kite is a brand of sparkling adaptogenic teas. Um, we, we infuse our teas. It's a huge difference um, that we have. Um, our tagline is steeped in goodness. And literally we are, the company is, and our product is. Uh, so we base our tea with adaptogens. We have a number of adaptogens in our tea. Our tea is um, steeped. Um, it's uh, with, made without any sugars, made without any so-called natural flavors. We don't have any um, preservatives in it either. We're organic certified. We're Whole30 certified. We're vegan certified. Just a really awesome clean label product and folks love it. And you guys are on trend. Sparkling oh, botanicals. Yeah. yeah, we are on trend. People are starting <laughs> to understand what adaptogens are. Like we were so wary. We were calling it at the beginning sparkling botanicals. And you know, what, what the what is when you when people don't know what you're selling is a really tricky thing. But it's awesome. People are coming around to kind of the what is kite. Yeah, you know, I think that was some of the feedback from the judges last year is, you know, how are you going to promote this? How are you marketing your brand, your product? And there was some feedback, there was some advice that they gave you. Has there been, have there been any iterations in terms of your package design or marketing strategy? Yeah, well, our packaging design is still a work in progress, but certainly we've cleaned up some of the shout outs on the packaging and kind of leaned into that feedback. Uh, we do still have, um, you know, the the customer base love it. They're, they're drawn to it. It's a little bit zen, uh, you know, but um, so they know it, it speaks to our customer base in a way that is not kind of tangible in traditional um, packaging, maybe like it's not what's done, but still it speaks to our customers. Um, but we do want to kind of bring in a few more tweaks to the packaging, just the hierarchy, um, you know, when one's left on the uh, uh, on the shelf, uh, which should never happen, but if one's <laughs> left on the shelf, which, you know, COVID out of stocks uh, abound these days, it seems with uh, brands uh, throughout, uh, you know, people don't, we don't want people to think it's a rise of line or unwind. It's got to, the, it has to be kite forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mentioned COVID. Recording in progress. Uh, but I feel like COVID has been one of those things that, uh, has really changed how we think about um, anything these days. And it's one of those things that I'm just a little, uh, I'm a little, one, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, you think about the first three months of the year 
And uh, those first three months were really, really challenging. And I'm sure there were probably people who were saying, am I going to make it through? How did you make it for, through those first three months? And you know, what is the plan going forward for 2021? Wow. I mean, I, I just put on, I, I focused. Um, it's, it's incredible to be, you know, have this uh, company that um, people love that's, you know, based around uh, holistic health and, and wellness and the magic of plants. And meanwhile, you know, you are completely tearing our hair out, stressed, just trying to bring all of the, um, you know, bring the product to market um, in a cohesive way with, you know, running out of cans, I don't know, corrugate went up 12, 13%, like, you know, in a week, just like chasing things, having, you know, just quality control across the way, you know, just putting, I feel very lucky that we have actually been so like have our, have had our bandwidth just completely taken up with working through um, uh, such scenarios. Help me out for a second. Um, yeah, I feel quite privileged that we've been so busy and, and, you know, working through these things. I mean, I know a lot of people lost their, weren't working and, you know, I, yeah, so yeah, it's been tough, cer certainly, but just putting our heads down and focusing forward, drinking, taking lots of adaptogens, using <laughs> that plant magic to power our energy um, and our company forward. Yeah. And your company has been moving forward on the distribution front. Uh, a couple of big pieces of news, or at least a couple of big companies that you guys have aligned with. Uh, talk a bit about that. Well, um, aside from Canada, which we're, um, we haven't updated recently, but we're nearing uh, a thousand stores uh, ready for an update pretty soon on our website uh, in Canada. Um, in the US, we just picked up uh, uh, Kihi and Unify as distributors. We've also got Feet on the Street uh, in New York. Um, coming very soon. Uh, so we're really excited about um, yeah, filling the pipe because it's, you know, I, just relying on Amazon to do that for us and director consumer is so hard in the beverage industry, just uh, especially in the winter. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just like, it's just not on. So yeah, just, you know, taking it back into the bricks and mortar is a really exciting challenge. Like I love it. It's I'm born to do that. Sure. Yeah, well, I asked Aisha for moments about their sampling strategy going into the second half of 2021. Again, so important to get people to try the product, to understand what it tastes like. It's not, you know, it, it's almost never apparent on the front of any beverage uh, package what you're going to be drinking, what it's going to taste like completely, especially for a new type of beverage like yours. So how are you getting people to try this? What is the sampling strategy going forward? Well, we've allowed our distributors to sell units. Um, so that's been really great at um, seeding the natural channel. So uh, outside of big box, I mean, the natural channel is absolutely massive. So if we can sell in units, so th those small stores buying two to three, it's great. So that's the, 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 the sorry, it's at the store level. Um, but yeah, it's really difficult at the customer level for us. We're still closed down in Canada, but um, I'll, I'll leak a little bit pre-press release. We are going into Air One. Um, market and uh, so we're really excited about that and with their CARES program like we're working on um, you know they're still not in a situation where they're fully sampling they're doing some you know trial sampling so we're working with Erwan to actually get product full product into the hands of um, potential customers so they have a valet service so we're going to do that and a few other things with them and also kind of support the community um, around just just seating for events and such is is how we're going to go about it but it'll be full full units that is really exciting congratulations yeah. on that news please continue please do send us the press release that is definitely something oh, we want to cover on we've got a few of them lined up like this is <laughs> my only one we're, hold, we're holding them back <laughs> you know it, it i think announcing it here and following up on a press release that's this is the perfect way to do it because you, you're wetting the palate and then you give them the full meal <laughs> with the press release oh, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Absolutely. you know i, I gotta think that also that when you are launching a new beverage and when you are launching a new beverage brand, the amount of mistakes that you make are just there. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it could top hundreds at any, at any given point, but, you know, thinking about the positives of what you guys have accomplished today to this date uh, is really remarkable. I mean, staying in the game is half the battle. Um, you know, how have you been able to overcome the challenges 
when they are coming so fast and furious, particularly during COVID, what has been your beacon? What has been your, your uh, guiding light? Um, I, I've been in um, CPG for a while and what I've learned over the years is that um, you have to be really honest with your distributors and your customers, like, um, you know, bring them into what's happening at, at, at a level that is appropriate, of course. But um, so for us, um, you know, when when we're kind of headed for out of stock, we I write an official letter. <laughs> I do the press release to the distributors and say, hey, guys, this is where we're at. And, you know, if they can't, if somebody is unable to really kind of understand that these are real time situations and that we are trying our best, and I try and get that across in our little press release letters, but um, just to really keep them up to date because mostly it's the um, not being in the loop and you know when we're going through things, um, you know, over promising and under delivering is totally different from prepping somebody to say this might happen and here are timelines. So really working with that. Well, that is so refreshing to hear. Honesty is the best policy. You don't always hear that in the beverage industry, but I'm glad you said it works because we need a lot of that. We need more of that, honestly. Well, it's a, it, you know, it's it's a big relief when you actually say this is how it is. And um, like we had a um, we had guaranteed cans, and then we had can liner issues, and um, you know, just explaining that, explaining the timeline, and everyone who we work with was just it was incredible. Like I mean, these these are good people. When they get stressed is when. Um, yeah, wh when you're trying to skirt around it and telling them in times and then they, you keep pushing them back and that's the stress point. With our customers, you know, wow, uh, we're just answering, um, you know, emails when, when that happens. You know, yeah. If anything happens, we're, we're just answering those emails, just being tangible and being real and, and, um, and you know, just keeping the love out there. Well, it sounds like it's working and Claudia, um, I'm so happy for you and Michelle. Uh, Kite is a brand that you know we love and respect, and I think you guys have a great runway for success. Uh, congratulations on everything that you've done to this point. Um, I know it's 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 exciting to win the New Beverage Showdown. It's even more exciting for me to see how you guys have progressed uh, since. Well, thanks. We're we're really excited to um, come out of this pandemic and just um, fly the kite. Like it's 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 there's so much potential, and we're very excited. I'm excited as well. Claudia, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in Santa Monica in six months. You will. Okay. Thanks. Fantastic. So much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, folks, thank you so much for uh, staying with us this entire time. Uh, I loved hearing from Claudia. I loved hearing from Aisha, the past two winners of the New Beverage Showdown. It's now time to announce the winner of this edition of the New Beverage Showdown, New Beverage Showdown 21. They're going to win this trophy and $10,000 in a prize package. The winner of the competition is Agua Bonita. And the, co and the founder and CEO is Kayla Castaneda. Kayla is with us now. Kayla, congratulations on your big win. Thank you, thank you so much. I will spare your ears from all of the screaming that just happened over here. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, I, I wish I heard it because uh, I'm so excited for you and I'm glad that you're so happy and excited. This was a tough, tough competition. Uh, two minutes and five minutes of presentations, you know, preparing, I'm sure for weeks on end uh, for, for this and it all paid off. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I also just want to say thank you to my co-founder, Erin, because she has helped me prepare just as much as I have. Um, so yeah, both of us in this together. And yeah, just watching all of the other brands present, it was tough. Like, you know, you watch everyone else and you're like, dang, that was good. Like, dang, that was good. And so <laughs> as you're going through, it's just like a whole range of emotions, you know, and kind of reflecting back on like, oh, you know, did I say what I wanted to say? Like two minutes and five minutes are really tough time frames. Totally, totally. But I will say this though, I was really, I was impressed by all the semifinalists and finalists. I was particularly impressed by your presentations, um, tight, professional, um, you know, nailed and laid out everything from, you know, what you were doing from a formulation standpoint to your, to an environment, environmental impact standpoint, to partnerships, to your progress uh, in stores and distribution wise. I mean, you really nailed it, I thought. How, you know, how did you, how did you 
plan this all out? Were you, are, were you in CPG or any kind of um, corporate planning before this? Cause it seems like you really know how to do this well. Yeah. So actually um, in another life, I used to work for Coca-Cola uh, with, in market development. So in that role, I really spoke to a lot of small business owners and customers to figure out what they wanted, um, what they would like to see. And then also like, what was a smart financial move for those uh, small business owners? So we took a lot of that data into like how we created Ala Bonita. Um, but when it came to pitching, I really, my goal with my pitches is always to preempt any questions that anyone might have. Um, so if I can, you know, kind of give all the answers before you have the time to ask the questions, then I feel like I've done a good job. And so that's how I really approached this pitch was, you know, from a lot of past conversations with potential investors and customers that were curious, just really pulling together all of those things and weaving it in with our own founder story to make sure that like you get the feeling for what Agua Bonita is, but on a business side, you know what we're all about too. Yeah. And uh, I think that you probably had, a, you did have a great answer for judges who wanted a little bit more chili. The chili's yeah. coming folks. The chili <laughs> is coming. <laughs> yeah. We've heard that a lot. And so it is coming. Everyone be prepared. It's coming. But I just always wanted to tell people that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think one of the other really interesting things about your pitch and your brand is that you really are tackling uh, a space in a, in a category of Aguas Frescas that really hasn't been, you know, there hasn't been much of a category. There hasn't much, much of a development of a segment. Um, and essentially now with you guys, you have two roles, it would seem. One is to focus on your brand um, and, and also to sort of be a category captain for other uh, potential brands to come to the space. You know, you know what they say, it's like, uh, it's not one brand that builds a category. You, you need to have competitors to move this thing forward. Um, you know, having said that, have you identified potential, uh, you know, potential players in this space that you can not align with, but sort of bounce ideas off of in terms of how to get in store, how to develop this space? Yeah, I mean, you are absolutely right. It almost feels like a responsibility as we're starting to, you know, build out this category to do it in a very like ethical way and kind of um, create a blueprint for how others might enter the same category alongside us. Um, when it comes to ready to drink, we haven't quite found anyone um, like similarly in the space, at least marketing themselves as, you know, our niche in that, in that um, healthier side of things. But I know that um, some big players like uh, Coke and I mean, the biggest player and <laughs> they, have, <laughs> they have fountain aguas frescas. So I know that there is interest in the category. And I think it, that it was just a matter of time um, before, you know, those fountain versions get translated into ready to drink versions. And then we'll start to see a lot of different iterations. So we really wanted to be first movers in this space and show that you can bring something like this to market that's you know, authentic and approachable. So what are the next steps for you guys? What is the next step for Agua Bonita? Um, you know, you showed a lot of retail development at this point uh, in, in your presentation. And I know you talked about a strategy for the next six months, six to 12 months, but immediately, what are the next, what are the next steps for the brand? Yeah, so right now we are in the midst of fundraising um, because we do have some good big- Good answer, good answer. <laughs> yeah, big plans, big aspirations. So that's the most immediate thing is we're fundraising to be able to execute on all those plans. And we are really a data-driven company. We love like staying close to our consumers and hearing what they like and really you know, taking that data and iterating in real time um, to give them something that they- want. And so as we start to roll out, it's going to be very targeted in Southern California and Texas. Um, and, you know, testing, basically like beta testing a lot of retail. Um, so that way we can properly prepare for much larger scale rollouts. 
and, you know, have that data set to be able to support how we can be successful at a large stage. So first things first, though, is fundraising and getting those dollars so that way we can uh, make our plan happen. Well, I have a I have a small suggestion. You don't have to do this, but, okay. you know, when we send you the trophy, just bring it, bring it with you to those retail visits so with those retail bars. And there's pour a little bit of the Agua Bonita into the into the uh, uh, trophy here and have them sip out of it and be like, yeah, this was us. We are the winners of New River Showdown 21. Uh, I, I don't know. You don't have to do it, but just a recommendation. That's why I'm not yeah. in marketing. You know, that's <laughs> a good suggestion to me. Maybe I'll have my family practice with me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should celebrate tonight. It is very well deserved. Congratulations, Kayla. Congratulations to your team. Um, you know, can't say enough. I'm really happy for you guys. Really happy for all the finalists and semifinalists. I, like I said at the beginning, this was a tough, tough competition. We had to have a winner and that winner is you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the New Beverage Showdown competition. Uh, thanks to everyone who participated. Thanks to everyone who was watching at home. Thanks to our amazing team at BevNet, Nosh, and Taste Radio. Uh, who have been tirelessly working to produce the best content that we can possible uh, for this competition, for next week's BevNet and Nosh virtually live event, for the following week's uh, Nosh Pitch Slam event. We just keep it going as best as we can. Hope you're really enjoying the content. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, ideas for future content, please let us know. Just send us an email. Uh, you can send an email to ask at tasteradio.com. I'll get it. Our team will get it. and We'll be happy to get back to you. Uh, in the meantime, once again, really appreciate you all joining us on this journey. I'm Ray Latif signing off for the team. We'll talk to you next time.